Good morning, this is Chris Holland. I'm the youth director here at CFC, and I'm going to be talking to you and bringing you your Friday morning devotional. We're going to be in 1 John chapter 1, and just talking a little bit about what John's eyewitness account of who Jesus is, why Jesus matters, and why he's so relevant to us today, especially in a time where we're all quarantined at home, we're getting just cabin fever, we want to be out, we want to go back to work, we want to experience real freedom again and experience some type of new normalcy, and it's just really, really hard. Uh, we're sitting at home trying to understand how to love our children well. Children are seeking to understand how to love their parents well. Um, and in some cases, like our home, your kids are shaving their own heads. Here, show me where you cut your hair. Point to it. <laughs> in other cases, you're just arguing. And it's becoming a harder and harder to be around each other. And so I think it's good for us to look back uh, to an eyewitness account of who Jesus was. And that's, that's what this does for us. So turn to 1 John chapter 1. John says, What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have touched at, or what we had looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, that's Jesus. And the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so our joy may be made complete. So I basically just have three simple points for you. The first point is real Jesus. Jesus is real. The second is real fellowship and what does that look like and who's it with. And the third is real joy. So point number one, simply Jesus is real. Um, in the hard times in my life when I have to really boil down what's going on in my life, the thing that brings me comfort is to think about those who love me and accept me no matter what. So if I have to get up and do uh, a preach in front of a group or I, I have to say hard things to someone that I know that I'm probably going to be rejected, um, it's easy for me to sit there and to think about people like my wife accepts me no matter what. But in this time, when we're all together and we're all in the frying pan of life together, and we feel like we're burning up and we feel like we're just in, experiencing the just the excruciating pains of, of this new form of transition and grief and anxiety. It's like we're all in it together and what we need to be thinking about is the one that accepts us no matter what. To calm our anxieties, to bring us back to the real world, to realize that he promised all of these things in the past, that we would go through hard times and that it's going to get worse, way worse before it ever gets better. And so what we need to know is Jesus is actually real. He is actually physically sitting in a throne in heaven, awaiting his next orders to return to earth. He is real and John has seen him. Before and after the resurrection, the man saw him transfigured uh, he saw him ascend into heaven. He heard his words. He felt his touch. He was fed by him n a number of times. He saw Jesus walk through the walls into the upper room where the disciples were. I mean, he saw the holes in his hands and his feet, and he's writing these things. We have truly seen these things. This eternal life, this word of life, which was with the Father and was manifest to us. Jesus is real. Think on those things. The second thing is real fellowship. When you come in contact with the risen Lord and He saves you and the Spirit fills you and you are one with Christ, then you are ushered into this, this new opportunity, this new just phase of life, this benefit of Christ. And it's called fellowship to share that which we have in common with Christ together. And he says here in verse 3, so that you may have fellowship with us being the apostles and indeed our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ it's that we are all in this together we are not alone and you're not you're, you're simply not you are in it with other christians within our church other christians in our world with christ himself and with the father and with the spirit you're not alone you're just not 
Jesus loves you more than to leave you alone. The third thing is real joy. In verse 4, these things we write so that our joy may be made complete. You have to think about the difference in joy and happiness is that happiness is based on your circumstance, whereas joy is an ever-present, flowing, subterranean, uh, overwhelming feeling and sense of joy, satisfaction in something. And that for every Christian, there is this subterranean flow of satisfaction in Christ in our lives. And oftentimes, God provides these scenarios in life like pandemics, like death, like disease, like sickness, like just phantom pains, mysterious issues, anxieties, things like he allows these things to occur so that we are forced to dig down into that subterranean flow of joy that's accessed only through knowing Christ is real and, he's, he, and he loves us and he cares for us. So as we move forward, think about these things. You worship a real Jesus who is truly real. And in Revelation it says that he will return again for you in love. And, and he cares for you and he's with you right now in fellowship with you. Therefore, dig deep into the joy that he has provided for you that all Christians have access to, that typically pain makes the most effective shovel to find the joy in our lives. And that joy, the source of it, comes from Christ, knowing he's real and you are not wasting your time by worshiping him and trusting him, even during hard times like this. So please go in peace and grace and love and know that we miss you and we can't wait to join with you again in church on Sundays, Wednesdays, and throughout the week, and uh, that the Lord Jesus is constantly and always will be with you.